In a previous video, we talked about the concept of time to live in the IP protocol that made sure that there was a counter that counted down so that if there was a loop on the network, those packets will be dropped rather than congesting the network. Well, in layer two, when we're dealing with switches, there is no counter like that at the MAC address level. So it's entirely possible that if somehow there was a loop at the layer two level between switches, that those packets would end up looping forever. And in fact, the more traffic you would put on, the more it would loop. And finally, the switches and the networks would become so congested that they just would not work any longer. Your switches would probably completely have a fault and would shut down at that point. If you're someone who works a lot with network switches or works with bridging between different switches, then you know you have to be very careful not to have this happen. It's very, very simple to accidentally plug in and create a loop on these layer two switches. And that's why we created the spanning tree protocol. This IEEE standard is called 802.1D. At least the original standard was called that. And it was completely designed so that we could avoid having these types of loops, especially when you have these very large networks with many different bridges and many different switches in them. This was a very, very good way to avoid having any of those problems. This was a protocol that was created by Radia Perlman. And you'll find it being used everywhere. It is an, a standard that everyone has picked up on on because it's one of the best ways to avoid these types of downtimes. There is a newer version called Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol, RSTP, and its specification is the IEEE 802.1W. With the spanning tree protocol, these switches that are on your networks, which are really just big bridges, are constantly communicating to each other. And they're talking to each other using this MAC layer MAC address. It's a multicast that is sending to 0180 Charlie 2 000000. And it's constantly sending little hello packets out to each other. And because it's sending it with a multicast protocol, not every device on the network is even going to bother looking at them. The only devices interested in seeing these these are the switches. And they're the ones that will pick up these packets and process them once they're received. This is sending a protocol called the Bridge Protocol Data Unit, or the BPDU. And it's sending this BPDU out to announce different things that are occurring out on the network. This is sending configuration information. It's sending hello messages. If anything changes with the network, the BPDU protocol announces to everyone else that these changes have occurred. The default time to send at least the hello packet is every two seconds. So a switch will send to the next switch down the line, hi, are you there? And the other switch responds back, yes, I'm still here. And they'll just every couple of seconds just check in on each other and make sure they're there. If a link does not respond back, we wait two seconds and send another one, and then wait two seconds and send that third one. And at that point, if we don't get a response back, we assume that that particular link is down, and we go into a configuration mode where we try to determine how we can change the network to now get traffic out and around that particular problem. In this particular network, we've set up a number of different bridges on the network, and we've connected them all together. And we've got spanning tree protocol running on this network. There is one bridge on the network that becomes the root bridge. It's one that you can configure to be the root bridge, or spanning tree can figure this out on its own and simply decide what the root bridge is going to be. Every other bridge on the network that is connecting these networks together is going to have one port on it that connects back to the root bridge. That port is going to be the root port. And you can see each one of these bridges has the way that it would use to get back to the root bridge out through the root port. The other port that's available to send traffic through on these bridges is the designated port. And that's this green DP designated port on each one of these. Also, if there's the case where a loop may be occurring, the bridges figure that out using spanning tree and set up a blocked port to make sure traffic does not go out that particular port. So let's say the scenario is that we're going to send information from network J to network A. And we're going to go through our root bridge. And you can see we're going to follow this path all the way down to network A to make that happen. But what if there was a problem on the network? There was an outage, for instance, between bridge 6 as it talked to network A. Obviously, this network would not be able to go there any longer. There's a block going out to network B. There's a block going out here, bridge 11. That's a bit of a problem. But bridge 5 is going to notice. And when it sends its hellos up here, notice that it's not getting a response any longer 
from bridge six. And at that point, it says, wait a second, we need to reconfigure a lot of things going on. It tells bridge 11 also, guess what? We're going to be making some changes here. Let's figure out who we can talk to at this point. And it reconfigures itself so that bridge 11 then starts sending traffic through. And bridge five now, the root port has changed to be the other side of the bridge. And the designated port now points into network A. So if we still need to talk out to that connection, we're still going to use the connections that we have on the network, but we're going to go a different way. We're going to go around all the way through Bridge 11 and Bridge 5 to get over here to Network A. So that's how Spanning Tree becomes more valuable for us, is that it's automatic. It happens very quickly, and there's nothing that we have to know to make that happen. We may get a notice on our monitoring screen that we had an outage, but we also know that the network was able to automatically reconfigure itself and begin sending traffic out the other connection, and doing this all automatically while preventing any loops from occurring, all by using the spanning tree protocol.